What is up, Scrub family? My name is Richard Zapp, and I am here with 3XG Productions. For those of you that have never been to the channel before, welcome. We pride ourselves in bringing you some of the most consistent, forward-thinking, and high-quality Dragon Ball Super Trading card game content out there. And if you're just getting into the game, you are getting in at the premiere time. We are at the... the uh, the climax of Series 10. We're about halfway through these previews. Uh, really cool decks. Uh, last week we saw a lot of blue two weeks ago. And then last week, uh, green has really, really been interesting. Uh, green's been a color that has never seen a lot of play in a mono color. And I think Series 10 may just be the, the breakout for it. Uh, so before I get started into this, a, a couple thank yous. Uh, first and foremost, Alec Pastrana. Bearded Collectibles. That's where you need to go for Series 10. Buy it right meow. Secondly, um, I cannot take take credit in any deck that I build or work on without the shout out to some of the most wonderful people that I've ever met. Matt Combs, Pat O'Neill, Frisco Foss, Jose Mercado, all contributing to this creature, this random 56 card nonsense has been testing insanely in our circles. Um, I could spend so much time talking about this deck. Um, where it started from uh, Matt's, Matt's initial proposal that you saw uh, last week on the 3 xg channel, um, the Patreon, um, to some of the, the to play testing that Jose Fresco and I did over the week, and it was all, all fantastic stuff. Um, I could spend a lot of time talking about the ratios, the math, uh, why, why 56 cards, why... So many ratios of each card. I'm going to try to avoid talking about that today. Uh, I'll have a video coming up if that's something that you're interested in. I'll keep your eyes peeled in the next day or two because uh, we have a whole plethora of, of math-related content to, to explain everything in here. But let's talk a little bit about this deck. So we have Sun Goku, the Ferocious Strike. And what he is, is he is a solid 15k leader on the back, 10k on the front. Um, he has a very unique characteristic of when one of your battle cards are KO'd, uh, you can awaken, uh, which allows you to awaken as early as eight life, which is not something we have seen outside of wish leaders, I think, in the entire history of the game. Um, in addition, he has this, this burst three, uh, when he swings, uh, which kind of makes him resemble a black leader in a different, in, in some ways. Um, but we're, you know, we're really not utilizing any of the overwhelm that a traditional black deck would do. But then when you flip into the back, Ferocious Strike, Esa Sun Goku, continues to burst three, and he has another ability of uh, once per turn, he can place two cards in his life into the drop in order to wipe the entire board. Uh, board wipes are something that has either not been common in the Dragon Ball Super card game or has been so expensive mana-wise, they don't see play. And this is one of the first occasions that we're seeing a board wipe that has any competitive merit at all right now. Um, yeah, but, so let's get into it. So, uh, what we're calling Dredgeku here is, is a, basically a mono-green Goku deck that is trying to take advantage of both of those factors to create a, a passive, uh, defensively balanced archetype where you're trying to either hand-control the opponent down, uh, or you are trying to out-resource them, and then utilize unisons to gain incremental advantage and win through that incremental process. So, we talked about um, how... how quirky this awakening is and you have two main initiators for that you have one the bardock unison we'll talk about in a little bit uh and two you have the ability to utilize blockers um so primarily what we're trying to use on turn one or turn two we're trying to play a blocker um ideally uh supreme kai time time regulator to ensure that we awaken all we have to do is they attack us we activate blocker uh supreme kai time goes to the drop area and we awaken right away um, that is the fastest way to awaken, and it's the best way to protect your life, so you can utilize that amazing activate battle to board clear. Um, but secondarily, as I said, you can use the, the Bardock Unison, which will blow up battle cards in order to awaken on your turn as well. Um, this being, again, the primary resource engine to protect yourself, uh, playing this card to draw a card is better than any of the other blockers that green has, which is why we lean that way. As I said, a, a main component of this deck is milling some of those key cards in your in your deck. Uh, Hasty Dispatch Dispo, uh, Master Roshi, Kamehameha Origins, uh, Great Ape, uh, Son Goku. Uh, what other ones are there? 
There is the Save of Hopeful Future and Ribbon, of course. Um, those are all cards that you want to go from your deck to your drop. Um, so the more that you can burst, the better. Um, Toki Toki, which you would think maybe if you're going to do four blockers, one Toki Toki, because you only have one search for it. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that Toki Toki one, um, it searches your deck, so you can determine if any of those crucial cards you want to get into your drop area are in your life. So you can be more intentional about if you choose to use your leader ability to burn damage uh, faster or slower. Uh, secondarily, uh, after you get through the early game, Supreme Kaya Time isn't always the best battle card to cast for one mana. Uh, so being able to uh, combo Toki Toki away at a 0-5 is much more valuable than the 0-0 zero zero that Supreme Kaya Time Time Regulator uh, provides. Uh, Dragon Ball Negative Energy Overflow. Uh, of course, you have access to one ultimate card in your deck. Uh, I chose Dragon Ball Negative Energy Overflow because I'm ensure that it's playable at every point in the game. It can't be interrupted. Uh, Black Smoke Dragon, the Series 10 SCR, is also a viable uh, substitute in this place. And we, we've gone back and forth, forth on both. Um, while this effect is almost identical to Ferocious Strike's uh, leader ability, uh, ultimately we found that this is not redundant uh, because of how expensive two, two life is. You can often only resolve it twice in a game. Uh, so negative energy overflow still has positive synergy. Uh, Android 21 we'll go back to. Um, so the unisons, these new components that Series 10 brings in, um, is interesting. And in a lot of ways, it acts as a, as a second leader card of sorts. Uh, thematically, the goal is to try to introduce uh, leaders and battle cards that characters that don't interact in the series and try to combine them in unique ways. Uh, so here we see Ferocious Wreck, SS Goku, uh, fighting alongside SS Bardock and Golden Freeze, the things that you wouldn't see in the, in the main series very much at all. Oh, uh, so SS Bardock, a very cool card. Uh, has not this auto when your opponent combos. Uh, you can choose one card in your combo area and, and uh, destroy it and then negate the skill. One, you can do it on both turns. Uh, two, you can pick which card it is. It doesn't have to be the first one that they utilize. Uh, so what we found is that just by casting this card, uh, Surge Goku just doesn't stand a chance against you. Uh, this plus one activate main is huge. You may choose one of your green battle cards with an energy cost of one and KO it. If you do, your opponent chooses one card in their hand and discards it. But not only is that conducive to your discard strategy, uh, you know, say a play like uh, Hardcast Hasty, Hasty Dispatch Dispo, uh, pay one to send it into the drop area, and then, or yeah, pay one to send it to the drop, uh, gain a counter on it. Uh, and now your battle card got KO'd because of the text on SS Bardock, and now you're able to awaken. Uh, so plays like turn one Hasty Dispatch, turn two uh, play SS Bardock and awaken is very common if you don't need to use the blocker turn one. And then this minus three, activate main, gain plus five and triple attack. Uh, that's one of the main ways that you're closing out the game. Uh, commonly, we, we end up with one or two copies of this card in your hand, and it's not unrare to pay four and just swing 20k triple attack, or to pay three, put a second copy underneath it, get to that uh, crucial four counter mark, and then just go uh, swing, swing, swing. Again, really impactful card. Um, other than Awakening, it's not super important in the early game. Um, usually Freeze has been a little more uh, synergetic with the deck for a few reasons. Um, so for those of you that don't know, Unison Analysis has, again, two abilities. Uh, first one is plus one. You draw a card, you choose a card in your hand, you put it on top of your deck, and you gain critical for the turn. So something that uh, we, we frequently find ourselves doing is you have a, a Ribrian or Quick Sweep Android 17 in your hand, and you want it in the drop. So what you do is you use the Activate Main, you plus one, uh, you take that card that needs to be in your drop, and you put it on top of your deck. And now when you swing with your leader, you burst three. There it is. Got that crucial plus. It's almost like drawing two with your leader. Uh, very, very powerful. Um, on top of that, you get that 15k critical, which if your opponent isn't awakening as much as you are, they are taking that all day. Um, critical being a great way to complement your, your hand destruction-based archetype. Uh, second, activate main. It really hasn't come up in, in like the 10 games we played with the deck. Uh, but until the end of your opponent's next turn, uh, they can't attack with battle cards unless they sacrifice something two or more. Um, it's a great strategy in a pinch to help against uh, wide aggressive strategies such as the black decks. But it may have its time at some point. Next card, Sun Gohan, potential unlock. Um, unique blocker. As long as you have a, a specific two-cost unison on board, so either the ones we just played, you can play this for free. So that's been huge for us. A really cool play. Um, say turn one, you don't have your blocker. That's fine with me. Uh, go into turn two. Uh, play your Bardock for two counters. Uh, so you can now play the Sun Gohan for free. 
and then Bardock can launch the Sun Gohan and allow you to awaken. Uh, that awakening being more helpful in some ways because you actually get to utilize the draw one and tap one that that leader has, which if you block, uh, rarely do you find an opportunity to use that, that one energy. Uh, besides that, we just play three copies because unique is detrimental. Um, you do find that you play this card many, many times over the course of a game uh, between Hasty Dispatch, Dispo, and drawing three copies. So being able to play different blockers is valuable. You'll see we play one copy of Human Shield Krillin, and that's mostly for the same reason. Uh, you want to be able to have two different blockers on the board if you need to, if they need to be green, uh, just for the synergy with a few of your cards, primarily the Bardock Unison. Um, but then 5,000 power, whenever you utilize something like Cell's Kamehameha, uh, a lot of the times your opponent will be down to zero, one, two cards in hand, and being able to swing with Krillin, either at a Unison or at the opponent directly, and then put a Cell Kamehameha behind it, so it's 20k opposed to the 19k that that Gohan would have, has been instrumental. Uh, looking at our new super combo from set 10, Vegeta the Lone Prince um, can't be played with skills from any area. So unfortunately, it does not have synergy with Hasty Dispatch Dispo. By the way, still one of the nuts, most nuts cards in the game. I'm, I'm convinced that card's gonna, something's gonna happen to it at some point. It's so powerful. Um, if your leader card is green, and your life is at four or less when this card is used in a combo draw a card. Um, and then if your leader's mono green, whenever you summon it, you get to choose one card in their hand and discard it. Uh, really, really cool way to invent a new super combo. Uh, at first, we were using Android 18. I know Matt was married to this card. I was married to 18. But the fact of the matter is we found that being able to play this card on turn one and then be able to put Bardock behind it and uh, or do the plus one to pop the Vegeta, you know, th discarding those two cards is just really hard to come back from. Especially if you're doing something like dropping a Ribrianne on him on the following turn. Uh, besides that, it's, it's great being able to hard cast for one energy. They discard a card. And then you combo it away on the next swing. Generically powerful card. And the fact that it's a 0-10 opposed to a 0-0 means that even if you're at more than 4 life, sometimes using it as a super combo doesn't feel bad. Great card all around. Free is a charismatic villain. Uh, for those of you that don't know, it seems like every color has some kind of counterplay at least we've seen with blue and green so far um basically as long as you have a unison with two counters you can play these and then you can't play any more counterplays for the turn uh so in this case as you play the card you choose one of their battle cards seven or less and you ko it um few cool things about this uh one it beats deflect in kind of the same way that Mataito skill of a sage does two uh you do not have to destroy the battle card they played so let's say they play an eight drop secret rare uh, you can still blow up their random four or five drop uh, based on the text on Frieza. Um, when we compare Frieza to the god Sealing Trunks that Blue has, I would say Frieza is underperforming a little bit, uh, but having the extra body on board for an extra 5k combo later on um, hasn't been irrelevant. Probably the biggest buff that Green got, and probably one of the most needed colors cards that this color needed for a long time, some answer to, to wide strategies. Uh, Dormant Potential Unleashed. Uh, it's a counterattack that says if your lead card is mono green, uh, you can blow up as many of their battle cards until you have until you the total of their battle cost is two or less. Uh, which means if they are sitting on a two drop uh, Goku and three Obunis tokens and an Obuni, uh, you can use the Dormant Potential. You can blow up the two drop and blow up all the tokens. Um, and then it has a secondary effect. Discard a green card. And if you do, they can only attack one more time. And then, of course, if you have a uh, unison on the board, regardless of the counters, play without paying its energy cost. Uh, what that means is that you can set up board states where they swing at you directly. Um, you activate this counterattack. Please note that this does not negate the attack, um, but everything else still resolves. So what you can do is you can counterattack and then block, stop the first swing. And then when they swing again, use another blocker or use any of your other negates. And basically, they've skipped their whole turn. In a lot of ways, that sounds like a, a Flying Nimbus, but I think this is much more powerful than Flying Nimbus. Uh, flying Nimbus only, to sh only stops battle cards from attacking. Uh, this card would prevent leaders and unisons from attacking. So overall, just a, a fantastic card. <coughs> During the late game, it's very, very common for us to utilize Master Roshi, Kamehameha Origins, uh, get back Dormant Potential, or get back the other negate that we have. Perhaps that's a Shocking Death Ball where we have a For the Greater Good in the drop. And as long as we keep one energy up, um, and have a blocker on board, we're pretty much guaranteed to, to skip the next two turns, or they only get one attack for the, for the whole turn. 
Uh, so we talked a little about human choke Krillin, pretty similar to to the you know it's, again just a one drop five k blocker uh, to save a hopeful future. So we have a small end game package here of uh, shocking death ball and Android twenty one a bad omen and Ribrian, um avatar of affection. And basically, this is just a small win condition package that on five energy, you can play either of these threats um, by, by fetching to save a hopeful future with Master Roshi Kamehameha Origins, and then immediately playing the hopeful future to play either Rib or Android 21. What we have found is that while you, when you do hopeful future into Ribrian, you do not get the, the secondary board wipe ability. Uh, just having a triple strike 30k that your, the, your opponent has to attack it. Uh, once you burn their hand so low, they rarely have the cards in order to obliterate that. Not to mention, Triple Strike is great for clearing off unisons in crucial situations. <clears throat> and in a hand control strategy, um, often it's important to take your life so you have a large hand size. And even if you don't cast it very often, Android 21, a bad omen, being able to threaten the opponent by saying, if you do take that one life, I'm going to revive Android 21 out of nowhere. GG. So again, it's one of those things that the threat of it is more valuable than how powerful it is, but it's not something to sleep on. Uh, One-off Shocking Death Ball, just a diverse card to pull with Kamehameha. Uh, it's nice being able to fully tap out for a turn and use Shocking Death Ball plus Dormant Potential Unleashed to make sure you don't uh, die. For the greater good, valuable card to get in your drop when you mill it, and just cool synergy. You can use Hasty Dispatch Dispo, you can discard uh, quick sweep Android with 17 uh, and make those cards negate, which they're cards you want to get in the drop anyway, or you can uh, discard unisons. Uh, seven unisons may seem like a lot, but between Dormant Potential Unleashed and For the Greater Good, you can pretty much always ensure that your drop's small enough, or that you can get those dead cards out of your hand. Uh, quick sweep Android 17, we just play one copy, one's all you ever need. Uh, basically, the play here is when you get into the late game, they have five, six, seven energy. Just pay an energy, revive quick sweep. <coughs> trigger your SS Bardock unison, uh, make them discard a card. Um, it's also common to do things like revive it, swing with something, combo it away, pay one, revive it back, swing with your unison, combo it away. Um, it's just a really cool way to, to gain uh, valuable resources in the late game. So that was Command Mega, the main reason why you're going mono green. Uh, this is a great way to pump your leader, protect your leader, a uh, great way when you're swinging with... Um, like your double strike Zabrato. Basically, it's busted. <laughs> it's really hard to overcome. And I have found that by leveraging it with your double strikes, that's pretty much how you're closing out the game. Uh, the one unfortunate thing about the card is you cannot pump Cell's Earth Destroying Kamehameha um, on a unison. So you have to be intentional with how you utilize that there. Uh, but otherwise, card's great. Recycle with Master Roshi uh, and generate obscene card advantage and make them take damage. Uh, I hit on really everything I needed to with Ribrian. Uh, Punishing Passion. This is just a fantastic card. Uh, you warp, you warp it from your drop, and you draw two cards. It's basically a, a zero, co or it's a two cost spell that says they discard two, and then you draw a card. Effectively, because you're usually comboing it away, or you're milling it, and your hand size isn't getting smaller. I think that's where the big power from this deck is: is that you're constantly sitting at like five, five to seven, five to eight cards. Uh, but you have like three different cards you can activate in your drop at any point. So even though the deck doesn't look like it has a lot of action economy, it's actually absurd how much it does. Uh, Hasty Dispatch Dispo. Um, if you don't have any cards in your battle area, you can warp it, and you can play a one drop from your drop. So you warp it, you get a blocker, uh, you get Supreme Kai Time, Time Regulator, uh, you get Zarbato to set up for next turn, uh, you get Quick Sweep Android 17 if you don't want to pay an energy for it. <coughs> and all it does is, is it sets up your blocker, so you have this long-term engine of block, activate dormant potential, activate a second negate. Or dormant potential, take the first hit, now use your blocker and stop the second. And it just creates a situation where it's really hard for you to get hit more than one time uh, going into the mid and late game. Uh, Master Roshi, Kamehameha Origins. You know, we used to think that Great Ape Sun Goku saying InSync was the better card. Uh, but in testing, we have found that if you draw too much, you threaten yourself with a deck out. Because it's not unusual in these Series 10 versus Series 10 matchups to go down to six, seven, eight turns in a game. Uh, so being able to use Master Roshi to ensure your, your deck count stays high enough that you can still swing with your leader advantageously is really valuable. As you see, you know, a lot of these green cards are, are one or two off copies. 
Um, and as your drop gets bigger, uh, Roshi just becomes more versatile and just accesses more things. A lot of these green cards cost zero or one effectively. Um, and it also lets you search for a win condition through to save a hopeful future if you find that you need it, even though the majority of your games, you just win just on advantage alone between all your, your destruction with your hand destruction and your unisons just generating incremental advantage. Dr. Jiro, Progenitor of Terror. Uh, we play just one copy as a second version, a second way to get whatever your, your drop triggers you need. Uh, it stops you from having to play a second quick sweep. It stops you from, like, it lets you set up double Ribrian plays on turn three, turn four. Uh, that's all really powerful. And then, of course, just being able to get Hasty Dispatch or Roshi if you're really desperate for a negate. Great Son Goku, Saiyan Instinct. Uh, you've seen this card a lot. Um, this card is. It might not even be a three even here. You might be able to get away with two. You, you could probably substitute uh, not even a scratch for it in a successful manner. Um, good, but surprisingly not over the top. And last but not least, Jiren Army of One. Uh, one of the most hyped cards from Draft Box 2. Uh, assuming your opponent has four more energy uh, at the start of your charge phase, if meaning before you draw, if it's the only card in your hand, you can play it for free. So what we found was happening is on turn four, turn five, um, you know, I talked about the really powerful defensive play of Dormant Power Unleashed, uh, plus a negate. So let's say you start the turn with five cards in your hand. Pretty normal, pretty normal. Uh, you, you pay zero for Dormant. Uh, that puts you down to four. You discard a card. Uh, you go to three. Um, and now they swing with... So and then you use your blocker. So you block that first hit. And maybe you, you combo... No, I wouldn't even need a combo. So that blocker dies. You have three cards in your hand. And now, or I guess you combo one card. And then when you get to their second swing, you do for the greater good. You discard that second card in your hand. Now you have one card in hand, and it's during army of one. And if you have more cards than that, you might have to combo a little bit for it. Uh, but being able to play Jiren army of one for like net minus one for free is just bonkers. And then after that, you can use Great Apes and Ribrian to utilize your energy in a productive manner still, not to mention Master Roshi, Kamehameha Origins. <coughs> Alrighty, that was my long-winded, super summarized version of the deck. As you can see, there's a crap ton of plays. There's so many lines to go through. We will definitely be getting some footage of this deck, especially as we get a better gauge of where the format is. Um, so th this deck, these ratios are just about exactly where you want it to be couple preference changes in our circles uh but we have some patrons shutting it over at 3xg discord they're all loving it you know we get people saying oh we, we haven't dropped a game yet with it we went uh what diego from over in europe he said he was playing the deck and he went nine and oh on untap um and this was just version 1.0 version 1.1 1 .1. um so much potential here um so if you're interested in the ratios check out look out for tomorrow's video on the patreon uh, where i go in depth into the, the numbers and math the ratios and keep an eye out for the rest of series 10 content in the weeks to follow thank you all as always for your support and we will see you next time okay bye